Some people have asked me if I can show them how to make marigold cream. It's now the end of July and the marigold flowers are in full bloom so you need to get out there and pick them straight away. So I'm starting you off right now because it takes some time to make it. These flowers I picked in the morning. Remember if you've seen any of my other videos, full sunlight, dry day because we don't want too much moisture on the flower. I couldn't show you how to do it because we've got some building work going on next door and it's too noisy out there at the moment. So just remember, pick the flower heads, flower heads in full sunshine with not too much moisture in the air. Now, you then have to lay those out to sit around for a couple of hours because loads of little insects crawl out of them. So those have been sitting around all morning and it's now two o'clock. And this part of making the cream is really easy. All I'm going to do is take all of these flowers that I've picked, all of them. Pickles. And then I'm going to pour grapeseed oil over them. Now the grapeseed oil has just come from the local supermarket. You can do that or if you want to be a bit posher you can buy it from the internet it's got to be cold pressed grapeseed oil because i have got very dry skin and because i am a lady of a certain age i'm 65 now i am going to put some jojoba oil in it jojoba oil is very very moisturizing for older skin so i'm going to use both of those oils so here we go and you just need to cover the flowers with the oil and you'll find it will take quite a lot because there's so much space in between the flower heads and then I'm going to add some jojoba oil jojoba oil is quite expensive but if you do have dry skin or older skin it is a fantastic investment so that's it, that is the first part of the marigold cream making done. I'm just going to make sure that all of the flowers are completely covered in the oil. Yep, that's great. That's absolutely perfect there. And then I'm going to put a lid on it. Sure that airs out. And then all I'm going to do with that is stand it on a window ledge in full sunshine. Sadly, the sun has gone in at the moment, but normally that window ledge gets a lot of sunshine. And that has to stand for three weeks. So I'll come back to that in three weeks and I'll show you how to make the cream. Hi, three weeks ago, I showed you how to infuse marigold flowers in oil so that we got marigold oil in preparation to make marigold cream. So here is our marigold oil that has been sitting on the window ledge now in the sunshine for three weeks. I don't know if I made it clear when I first told you, but the flowers have got to be completely covered with oil. Otherwise, if you've got anything sticking out of the oil, um, they'll get bacteria and fungus growing on them, but the oil in itself is a preservative. Now, we can't use it like this, and the first thing we're going to do is, that is a nice muslin, clean muslin cloth, a strainer, and a glass bowl. And I'm going to put the muslin cloth on top of the strainer and pour all of that in there. Now you'll have plenty of time, so just leave that all to strain through that muslin cloth. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Whoa, how beautiful is that? Look at that gorgeous golden colour that's come from the marigold. We're going to use that oil to make the marigold cream, and for that you are going to need one of these, which is a mini liquidizer. 
a measuring jug of some sort. I've got this posh one because I use it in my clinic, but you can use any measuring jug that you want. Um, some glass or plastic jars that you can usually order them online uh, with lids and some labels. Those are the things that you need to have ready. Now, I'm just like you, I need to look at my menu every single time and rather than write it all out for you separately, I have put it on labels here so that it's fairly obvious what you need. Uh, in a minute, I am going to put in that cylinder 20 mils of our marigold oil. This is called the fat stage. And then we're going to use seven grams of emulsifying wax. This is the emulsifying wax. I have bought it online from a company called Aromantic, but you'll be able to source it anywhere online. Now, because you might not have a, um, a, a weighing scales in your kitchen that weighs that small amount of grams, I'm just going to show you that seven grams is a dessert spoon full of emulsifying wax. So if you get a good dessert spoon full and use that as your seven gram measure. We're also going to need 70 mils of boiling spring water. I've got my water boiling over there on the stove and we're going to need three mils of glycerine. Again, that's come from Aromantic, so you will be able to source it either from any chemist or online. You're also going to need vitamin E oil, 10 drops, and again, online. And vitamin E stops oil going rancid, so Unfortunately, you might think, well, I don't want to use it, but it is worth putting in. And this is a natural source of vitamin E. Many oils, such as wheat germ oil, are very high in vitamin E content anyway. And then you're going to need 12 drops of something called preservative 12. Now, I'm a medical herbalist. I like everything natural, and obviously I don't like preservatives in the things that I'm making or eating or using on my body. Unfortunately, and especially in weather like this, if you make a cream or an oil or an ointment without putting something in it to preserve it, you'll get it covered in bacteria and fungus. This is a natural preservative. Uh, Aromantics say that they, everything that they stock is as close to natural as can be. And there are several preservatives, such as the extract of uh, grape seeds. Which, sorry, there are several um, substances, such as the extract of grape seed, which act as natural preservatives. I have chosen to use this because I've read about it, and I think it is as close to natural as we can possibly get and not ruin our cream or oil. First thing we're going to do is put our 20 mils of oil, and that is our marigold oil in there. Put it in there. And just let that drain out a minute. And the seven grams of emulsifying wax also in there. Right, and what I'm going to do with that is stand it in a saucepan full of boiling water on the cooker. The water is just simmering and I'm going to stand it in there. Obviously all the health and safety usual things, be careful with your hands, that is boiling hot. And the reason for this is that the oil and the wax are going to melt together. I'll give that a stir so that I know it's all together and it won't take long it'll take a few minutes to 
melt together. You can see that that has all melted together. In here I've got my 70 mils of water which I'm going to pour straight in there. It won't mix up at the moment. So we're going to warm that up and because you probably haven't got a measure for the three mils of glycerine, a normal kitchen's teaspoon is usually slightly less than five mils but if you've got a medicine spoon you can use that as well they've usually got measures on them so we are going to put just less than the teaspoon actually it's probably a little bit yeah I'll do. Uh, just less than the teaspoon full of glycerine in there that's the, that's the 70 mils of water, 3 mils of glycerine in there. I'm going to heat that up a bit. Now to that, I'm going to add our 10 drops of vitamin E oil. Vitamin E is, oil is very, very thick and you've got to be patient with this. Come on oil, drop. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ten that's that done and then we've got the 12 drops of preservative 12 this is this is much runnier so you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with this one two three four five Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fantastic. There we go. Give it a bit of a stir. We need that quite hot because we need the fat and water to mix together. The emulsifying wax is the thing that gets the water and the oil to mix together. Otherwise, as you know, oil sits on top of water. So I'm going to lift this out with a tea towel because it's hot. Put my hand under there and I'm going to take it to the other side of the kitchen because that's where the liquidizer is plugged in. Don't put it on a cold surface. Use something that you know that won't be freezing cold, otherwise your bowl might crack. And here is the magic coming up. So we've got oil and water in there, which isn't properly mixed together. So you need to get the liquidizer right into the liquid, and that gets the oil and the liquid to mix together. Normally I make it in bigger quantities so I don't have a problem of this small quantity and using the liquidizer in it. So if you want to make more for yourself then just multiply up your ingredients uh, as to however much you've used. That has been standing for about five minutes now. You can already see it's thickening up. I'm going to take the bowl back over there because that's where my bottles are. The thing about marigold oil and cream is that it doesn't smell very nice. Marigold oil has got a um, quite a strong woody, flowery, no flowery but not sweet flowery smell, so kind of plant smell. 
and so I always like to put an essential oil in there. Um, the good thing about essential oil is it again acts as a preservative. Now I've got older skin and we used half and half grapeseed oil and a jojoba oil in our mix when we made the marigold oil and, and because jojoba oil improves the elasticity of skin and very nutritious for older skin and also rose oil does exactly the same. Rose oil is justly called the flower of love because it really does make you feel better about yourself. Um, so I love rose oil and I'll use rose oil in this mixture but you could use if you prefer lavender oil or jasmine oil. Jasmine oil is also a very beautiful smelling oil and also improves elasticity of the skin. But I'm going to go for the rose, it's my favourite. We're going to use the 10 drops of essential oil in there and you can see that we're going to have to work fairly quickly now because that's solidifying up there. So here we go. Rose oil is again quite thick so you might need to encourage it to start coming out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's sitting on top at the moment, so don't waste any of that because rose oil is expensive. And we're going to mix that all nicely in. Oh, that smelled beautiful. Love it. The cream is, a, you can see the texture of it. It's fairly light. It hasn't gone completely cold, so it'll solidify up a little bit more than that. These jars are clean and I haven't sterilised them because we've got the preservative in there, but they are absolutely clean. I've made sure they're clean and the lids are all absolutely clean and brand new. So make sure that you've got everything as clean as you can possibly get it. That is now going in the jar. Oh, if you haven't got one of these food scrapers, go and buy one. They're fantastic. They'll just get every bit of whatever you want out of a glass bowl. I've, I've owned one of these, not this same one, but I've owned one like this for about 20 years now. And I think it's the most essential bit of cooking equipment that you can have because I hate wasting things. So you can see that scraped that bowl pretty much clean. All in there. And that is our beautiful cream. Always, always label whatever you have made because one, it tells you what's in the jar, and secondly, it tells you the date that you've made it. So if you've kept it a long time, it's probably not a good idea to use it. This cream, because it has got the vitamin E oil and the preservative, should keep for about three to six months. Um, so it'll be all right. If you're worried about it, you can keep it. If you've made a lot and you're worried about it and you're somewhere very hot, then keep it in the fridge. But I've made a label, quite basic. It says marigold cream and it's got 21814 on there. So marigold cream and the date on the jar. And there you go, all done. It's a really lovely texture. It'll rub in nicely. The nice thing about this cream 
is that because it's got all natural ingredients and also fairly light, um, you can use it on your body. It's a really good body moisturiser, but just skin test it on a little piece of your face. Um, but it should, it should be completely safe to use on your face as well because it's got no nasty additives in there. Oh, that is really beautiful. So there you go. You can make yourself a beautiful natural marigold cream. Enjoy it.